Towards the end of the American Civil War, on April 1, 1865, the Battle of Five Forks was fought southwest of Petersburg, Virginia, near the Five Forks Road intersection in Dinwiddie County. Major General Philip Sheridan's Union Army routed a Confederate force led by Major General George Pickett's Army of Northern Virginia. While seizing Five Forks, the key to control of the Southside Railroad, a major supply line and evacuation route, the Union Army caused over a thousand losses among the Confederates and captured up to 4,000 captives. So how did the Union knock down one of the Confederates' biggest strong points? And how did it propel them to continue on their way to gain their biggest victory? This is History Uncovered, bringing you historical events and their truth. A Thora Union plan, after the Battle of Dinwiddie Courthouse, on March 31st, the infantry from 5th Corps supported Sheridan's cavalry at around 10 p.m. Pickett was told to defend Five Forks, at all hazards, by his superior, General Robert E. Lee, because of the town's strategic value. After nearly nine months of encirclement, Union General Ulysses S. Grant was ready to deliver the killing blow to Confederate General Robert E. Lee at Petersburg, Virginia, in the spring of 1865. To the west of Petersburg, Grant intended to lengthen Lee's lines in an effort to cut off his supplies or force a breakthrough. Grant decided to focus on Five Forks, a crossroads in Dinwiddie County. Grant's cavalry, led by General Philip Sheridan, and General Governor K. Warren's V Corps took the strategic intersection and cut off Lee's last supply route, allowing Grant to consolidate his gains there. To advance on the Southside Railroad, Grant dispatched General Philip Sheridan and his cavalry through the strategic Five Forks intersection. In response, Lee gave General George Pickett instructions to hold the crucial intersection, at all costs, along with his infantry division and General Fitzhugh Lee's cavalry. After learning of the Confederate force, Sheridan sent a request for infantry reinforcements to the adjacent Union command of General Governor K. Warren. In order to better defend against the Union approach, Pickett withdrew his army to Five Forks on March 31. The battle begins, when Union troops under General Philip Sheridan arrived at the Five Forks crossroads on April 1, 1865, they found that General George E. Pickett's Confederate forces had positioned themselves there. General Governor K. Warren's V Corps was essential to Sheridan's plan to attack the Confederate position. Warren's infantry was making their way to the region, but they got lost on the way and couldn't move as quickly as they had hoped. About four o'clock in the afternoon, Warren's troops formed up and were prepared to strike. General Thomas Mumford, one of Pickett's commanders, dispatched a messenger in search of the absent generals just before the combat began to warn them of an impending attack by federal forces. During the lull, Pickett and Fitzhugh Lee departed their posts without appointing a replacement to lead the troops in their absence in order to partake in a shad bake at a nearby farm. As a result, the attack began with no one in overall command. The V Corps advanced toward the Confederate left as Sheridan sent his dismounted cavalry divisions to the right and center of the Confederate lines. Once the V Corps onslaught began, however, uncertainty engulfed the command. When the Federals saw that the Confederate lines on the left flank formed an angle instead of a straight one, their attack quickly went downhill. As a result, the division under General Romier and Ayres attacked the angle with the intention of attacking the front of Pickett's position. The divisions of Samuel W. Crawford and Charles Griffin, whose help Ayres required, instead marched off past the angle and entirely missed Pickett's line as Ayres turned his men toward the angle. However, the situation was salvaged thanks to the fast thinking of little round top hero Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain. Ayres' division, which he could see was actively engaged in attacking the angle, was getting farther and farther ahead of Griffin's division, where he commanded a brigade. He used excellent judgment as a commander and led his brigade around to strike on Ayres' right flank. After witnessing Chamberlain's daring maneuver, Griffin and the rest of his division took action. Pickett's soldiers opened up with devastating fire, and despite the fact that Ayres and Chamberlain's men were practically on top of the Confederate breastworks, the attacks began to lose impetus. Pickett and Fitzhugh Lee didn't even know there was combat going on until it was well underway. The acoustic shadow, an uncommon phenomenon in which sound is absorbed by the surrounding forest and not heard, contributed to the locals' lack of awareness. When the two unoccupied generals finally caught on to what was going on, it was too late. Once on the battlefield, Pickett watched as his entire line collapsed beneath the weight of the Federal Army. A fatal loss, historians provide estimates of fatalities. Some of these figures are similar to those provided by Earl J. Hess, who estimated roughly 600 Confederate casualties, 4,500 prisoners, and the loss of 13 flags and 6 guns, as well as 633 casualties among Warren's infantry and, probably fewer, among Sheridan's cavalry. 
According to Noah Andre Trudeau, the union suffered 830 losses in total, including 103 dead, 670 wounded, and 57 missing. When compared to previous accounts, Trudeau's is more modern accounting. Green and a number of other historians report a Confederate death toll of roughly 605, with an additional 2,400 taken prisoner, a number that predates Hess's account. The same numbers are cited by A. Wilson Green later on. The reduced number of captured Confederates is also cited by Chris Calkins. According to the estimates provided by John S. Salmon, the Union suffered 830 casualties, while the Confederacy suffered 605, in addition to 2,000 to 2,400 captives. The findings from the National Park Service are consistent with this observation. Despite the fact that it would not appear like a significant loss, it was in fact a hard punch for the Confederates to take into consideration the fact that the Union had more men on their side. The bitter surrender, army units of the Confederacy that were successful in navigating the woods and fields to reach the South Side Railroad crossed hatches ran away and established positions on the other side of the W. Dabney Road. After bringing some semblance of order to the disorderly group of soldiers who had survived the battle, Pickett led the soldiers in their newly formed units toward Exeter Mills, which is located at the mouth of Wipornik Creek. From there, Pickett planned to cross the Appomattox River and rejoin the Army of Northern Virginia. Thank you for watching, we hope you learned a lot about the crucial Battle of Five Forks, don't forget to subscribe if you're interested in learning more about the true side of history. See you soon on another video.